Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in today's episode we have Tushar Kapoor. Tushar Kapoor is an Indian film actor and producer. He also has a bachelor's degree in business administration from the University of Michigan and has worked as a financial analyst. For many of our listeners we don't know about that. We know about Tushar's acting journey which began in 2001 with the hit film Mujhe Kuch Kehna Hai. Since then he's appeared in hits like Khaki, The Dirty Picture, Shoot Out at Lokhandwala and Shore in the City among others. His impeccable comic timing as a mute character in the blockbuster comic film Golmal made him a household name and a favorite among kids and families Tushar is also the son of the veteran actor Jitendra and now today in today's episode we are going to talk about his first book The Bachelor Dad Welcome Tushar in today's episode Tushar this is your first book The Bachelor Dad you wrote this book during lockdown why did you feel the need to write this book you know because through this book the more i was sitting down and reading i found a very down to earth person unlike what we um, you know as people around would imagine so what was the journey it must have been very overwhelming for you to be a single father what was the first night like with laksh uh you know once he came into my life i think all the feelings of uh you know being pressured by you know this whole new phase of my life beginning and the feeling of being overwhelmed all that just evaporated because i just got onto the job and i just loved it and i think i was cut out to do it at that point of time in my life i was of course nervous i was a bit apprehensive before you know he actually came into my arms whether i was uh, you know i i was clear and i was confident but i was of course anticipating you know as all humans do a lot of lot of lots of things that come with changes and the fact that this was going to be a huge change in my life i was a bit apprehensive ki how will my life now change what will my life change into now how will i uh, you know will i be able to do things that i do did earlier what is it going to be like and uh, just like the fear of the unknown but then once he came into my arms i was quite uh, clued in and it just a new phase of happiness peace and uh, fulfillment began as far as the book is concerned i would call it like my second child so just like my first child my son even when i decided to write a book the fact that i had i had made up my mind and i was going to and had actually signed signed up with penguin one of the biggest publishers was exciting but again i felt a bit apprehensive as to whether i'll be able to do it and how much work will it require will i get the time and uh, yes i wasn't really keen on doing it initially but my friends uh, encouraged me and by the time i spoke to a lot of people by the end of 2019 i had made up my mind that i want to write a book and mystically i got an offer at the same time so it all worked out in that sense as far as the timing is concerned but yeah getting to really write it was a bit difficult to start with and then i got used to that also just like i got you how i got used to being a single father i got used to that be doing doing that also single handedly because i wrote the book myself in fact so i think it's my buddhist practice also that has come very very handy in this whole thing that has uh, given me the wisdom has given me the strength and the enlightenment to write this book on my own single handedly though i might be sounding boastful right now but it would be important to state it but uh, yeah the lockdown was just like a coincidence it was not something that i planned uh i didn't plan to write a book because there was a lockdown the lockdown just happened and then again it worked out in a way because uh, i got stuff to write about in the book which pertain to the lockdown and that was the last two chapters so i think it's all i think uh, there are things that we do in our lives which are new for us which we don't really plan very very far back in time but they kind of unfold in a way as if it was destined for us to happen so my son is one of those things and my second child is this book that's how i'd like to describe it so tushar i mean i completely relate to you because i also got down to writing my first debut book during lockdown you know having career in advertising and then giving it giving it all up and my son went off to london to study so i completely understand about uh, you know being um, an author and putting things together because you know you feel the minute you 
you know put your experiences out there you know on the paper you know on your ipad uh, that, that i used to write on so i just wanted to ask you a little bit more about the emotions and things that that was like a recollection that would have entered your mind all at once and other times when you experienced a complete dearth of thoughts how did you deal with that you know so walk our listeners you know through your journey of writing i'm sure you must have been nervous a lot of people today are opting for different sort of families you know so there are single fathers there are single mothers and they don't want to go through the entire rigmarole of uh, you know of marriage and uh, but they want to become parents right so tell us about those nervous moments when you were putting the book together uh, yeah so i think uh, what was uh, a challenge initially was planning the book in the sense that how am i going to plan my time so because i was a bit overwhelmed i made up a mind that i'm going to write for an hour or two every other day so that i don't really feel like i'm bogged down by it so that was a good thing to do to begin with because i had a day off from writing even though i was enjoying it i didn't want to feel like i'm doing something you know something terribly new and too much pressure and i'm like being forced to do something by my own decision so i wanted to feel free so i said i'll do it every other day and gradually i started liking it so i increased the frequency i then started writing my first chapter took a month which is a long time and then thereafter i started writing every night i allocated 2 hours or 1 hour at the end of the day so i don't feel like the book is coming in the way of my day's work and in fact I, we weren't going out at that time but we were at home and we were doing so many things i was working from home i was parenting from home i was working out at home so it it was a uh, it was a very very busy time so i allocated the night time for my book which made it feel a little less cumbersome initially and as, as i got more and more used to it i started increasing the frequency and by the time i 8 10 months were over i was writing whenever i was free so i was like now wanting to finish this book and i was enjoying it and i also followed a step by step procedure i used to make notes first so that i can really pen down my thoughts and collect my thoughts and um, then after that i used to formulate and structure all the notes that i made all my thoughts in a, in the correct manner in in the sense like kind of edited it to really make it like a proper copy and uh, thereafter i used to check it again read it again and go stage by stage so i used to like pen my thoughts first and then i used to rewrite it and uh, you won't believe it but i really never had a dearth of thoughts i don't know what that is magic that's pure god's hand at play but i think i i can confidently say that i always had the right sequence of events in my mind about a particular chapter of my life as far as my single fatherhood is concerned somehow i think it was it was uh, god's hand as i said earlier also because everything just came and i think the biggest fear i had was that i might i should not miss out on anything in this book because it's so personal an account and i'm writing it myself so it shouldn't be like okay i missed out on some important points but i think again my buddhist practice must have given me some sort of a wisdom and some sort of clarity because i used to chant a lot and that really fueled uh, my uh, thinking while i was writing the book and everything just came i think that's the magic of writing you know when you start writing you're you're just you're in another world altogether and it's like some it's like another uh, realm of creativity which if fueled correctly if inspired correctly it can really you know make you write things that you you seem to have forgotten about and that came back to you when you started writing it i think that's what happened to me there are things that i must have forgotten about and i would have probably never remembered but while i was writing them i was like oh my god this is so important this is so important so that's that's just magic i can't really answer this question without saying that it, that that part was just magic but yeah the structuring and then i and then i realized that you know i have to put it on a word document writing it on a word document those were things that i had really planned to make it look to make to make to make myself feel like i'm enjoying it and not feeling very very burdened by it and that really helped me go with the flow so the structuring of the book uh, as far as you know how frequently i wrote it initially and then gradually increasing the frequency of writing it planning my time and uh, then you know writing it all in a word document before i sent it to penguin all that was probably i something that i planned but as far as the fact that you can't really plan is the magic of thoughts appearing in your mind which you have probably already forgotten and you never th- think that they would come back to you but they came back to me at the right time when i was writing the book and they pertained to 
the material that was you know being dealt with in the particular chapter so it was all uh, mystically happening in front of me and i think that's a beauty of writing that you know there are things that keep coming back to you which you probably buried somewhere in your at the back of your mind and you never really thought that they would come back to you but they came back to you at the right time while you were writing while you felt inspired while you were motivated about dealing about penning your thoughts pertaining to a certain chapter of your life and that happened with me also so that's just magical i can't really answer it as to what was it that really went into came into play when i was trying to recollect on my thoughts that was just there was just pure magic and i don't think i missed out on any real important details which is what the beauty about writing this book was all about so tushar you know what i was sitting down in the cafe and i really uh, you know was smiling uh, when i was reading about how you got angry when your entire room was turned upside down you know for uh, vastu hoping that uh, you know your mother wanted you to get married you also went and met a girl but you were very sure that there would be no connect at all okay so through while i was reading there was a very strong tone that said you're very sure that marriage is not meant for you but fatherhood is so how did this entire take on marriage and this uh, entire notion of being a single father c- cemented for you um, you know what were incidents or things that made you believe that you are not fit for being married or wanting to get married well uh, i i i'm no one to really uh, you know know it all beforehand that you know i may be not marriage material or maybe that's not the eventual the the most uh, appropriate outcome for me in my life as far as family life is concerned i was never really that sure i was giving it uh, you know i was taking it casually as i written in the book also and i was going with the flow and just like my career somehow you know took several twists and turns and really found its true calling i thought marriage or my family beginning would also be happening in that manner something good would happen some clarity would happen but then by the time i was in my mid 30s as i written in the book i think i started realizing that i can't wait longer to be i have to plan something for my family life i can't wait longer for destiny to really uh, come into play and you know i'll find the right match or the right life partner i can't really procrastinate so much i need to do something because my parents are going to growing old i'm growing older i'm in my mid 30s late 30s going to be in my late 30s and you have to be energetic for your child so i think that's when i started actively thinking about maybe single parenthood is the a uh, right option for me because i have talked some people really enlightened me about it and they also said that you know there are fertility centers in the us where you can actually start a family of your own biological uh, become a biological father to someone without really getting married and it's legal etc et so i was just thinking out those lines i was scared to really do something so uh, you know radically different to what we expect us to do in a society in india in this society especially so those thoughts were scary but so i had not really made up my mind there also and then gradually how it unfolded as far as you know my taking that decision and taking that big step is concerned that is about uh, that that's something that you would have to read in the book because i can't then the whole you know the fun of really reading would not be there but yeah i did go with my go with the flow initially and i was just like taking life as it comes and then i decided to think more actively and then gradually i think you you kind of manifest what you really ought to be doing i, I believe in that you know when you when you haven't really made up your mind but somewhere deep down you know that you got to be going in certain directions it all starts manifesting itself on its own i think we create our environment which is which is what uh, happened with me also so there was no real uh, i won't be able to say that okay i realized that marriage is not my uh, cup of tea and i i was sure i don't think that confidence really ever came uh, and i haven't really spoken and spoken about it in that manner too in the book that you know i i realized that i know that i'm not married i always said that marriage is possibly an an option never say never and it's a great institution i believe in it because it's worked for millions and billions of people but maybe i've always said maybe that's not what i was cut out to do and uh, which is why uh, i i saw myself trying to uh take my take take my take i was saw myself trying out different things 
at least trying to think about different things and then something really drastically different worked out for me so it's really enormous you know i mean uh, talking to you it's enormous the decision that you took i mean there must have been instances that you know where uh, you might have to take decisions you know about little little things that happen around you being a father so any one incident that you would like to share because there'll be a lot of single fathers would be interested in hearing how is it you know sometimes when a child doesn't find a sock they generally go to the mother okay and uh, here is a father who's a sole caretaker so i'm sure in school when you've gone and you've gone in for parent teacher meetings and you know because it's always the number of single women more uh, versus men who are opting for parenthood but of course things are changing now in the traditional concept of a perfect family narrate to us any incident that you think any of our listeners would really benefit as to how you went into those nitty gritties because you were also raised uh, you know with a mother and a father in a, you know in a, the way the society would view as a regular family life so some uh, fun inst- instances or incidents with laksh uh, we would love our listeners to know well in fact today is itself was his graduation from the early years of his school and i mean just came back from his ceremony which is why i scheduled our podcast for 11:30 because i just came back home at 11 uh, i uh, scheduled for 11 because i came back home at 10:30 am sorry yeah so uh, what's interesting is that i've just done it myself i've been to every parent teacher meeting i've been to every graduation ceremony i've been i've done all lots of pickups and drops and uh, i just confidently i can confidently say that he hasn't indicated to me yet uh, any kind of you know feeling of confusion or you know even wonder or any kind of doubt or any kind of uh, incompleteness in that regard which is something that i can really positively and confidently say maybe it's just because i've been there from the very beginning and he understands and he knows that there are all kinds of families i've read books to him and uh, uh if if you know if you feel complete you feel complete what you what your family appears to be is not really that important according to me i think how you feel inside how you feel uh, how you, nurtured you feel how how much how much of a sense of belonging do you have to a certain family how wanted you feel how unconditionally loved you feel i think that is what makes you feel complete and that what that's what a complete family should be about the 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 confidence the security and the the acceptance that you know children carry within themselves that is more important than you know so and so's parents come and my dad comes i don't think he's got into that he hasn't gotten into that zone yet he i mean it might sound surprising but maybe because i've had conversations for, with him which are age appropriate about the different structure of families and the different kinds of families and uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll 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 brave every storm if there is any also oh wonderful if there is something that comes up in future and he needs to be spoken to i will deal with it like all parents do when the children come home with certain questions you know that that's something that i'm not going to say is going to be an exception to the rule it's going to be like it is for every family so i'm normalizing my family because i feel normal and i and i know that my son feels normal So what are your views on the surrogacy regulation bill 2020 you know which denies the opportunity of parenthood to lgbtq plus people live in couples and single parents would you like to share some thoughts there uh i'm sure there are reasons for the bill and i'm sure you know at the from the outside it might seem like you know it's unfair and you know everybody deserves an equal chance etc and i am all for equality but i'm sure that you know the 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 regulators must be having to deal with a huge socio economic demographic in a country that is so vast so diverse and uh, there may be so many ki- all kinds of incidents that you know happen with regards to parenting and when there is unusual you know parenting like mine and which is which is kind of against which is against the norm i'm not saying it's not normal but sometimes when it's against the norm and when surrogacy comes into play there i think the rights of individuals come into play and that is something that you know i can't really answer because uh, legalities go into so much more depth they they understand so much more about what has happened in the past and there are so many precedents that must have really led them to decide to do what they did so that is something that just i would i would like someone maybe maybe from the authorities you know to really answer this question because you know we're just not we're just regular citizens and so we don't really know what's going on in the country as far as that is concerned 
and they do the regulators do so i'm sure they know best but i hope and pray that everyone who genuinely wants to become a parent no matter how he or she wants to become a parent should have the right to do so and i hope that works out for everyone you know so for all our listeners with this answer we of course know that tushar is of course very politically correct and of course being a financial analyst having now been an actor and a producer and as an author now his book uh, bachelor dad really delves deep into him as a person the humility with which he's written and of course I'm a huge fan Tushar so as a single dad it must be overwhelming thinking about how you'll raise your kids after all but there is a saying that says it takes an entire village to raise a child so how can one single man do it alone so please listen to this podcast with Tushar and you will know how brave one can be when one wishes something deep from within their heart thank you Tushar for being on today's episode and uh, I really hope that I can send you my book and I hope you enjoy reading that and thank you once again thank you Mohawa thank you lovely talking to you lovely talking to you and all the best and lots and lots of love to Laksh thank you to you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favourite streaming services Spotify Amazon Music Apple Podcast and of course on all other major streaming services with loads of love we are the Mohawa show where we talk Imandari Seh